record there. All right. You guys can hear me? I think so. See my little green thing there? Okay. Um, okay. So, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the first workshop we got during this hackathon. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on building interactive web pages using JavaScript DOM. Um, for those who are not familiar with what DOM is, uh, let's get right into it. JavaScript DOM is a scripting, JavaScript DOM scripting uh, is an essential skill for front-end developers who want to create dynamic and interactive web pages. Uh, the document object model, which is what DOM stands for, is a programming interface that represents the structure of an HTML or XML document as a tree-like structure of nodes and objects. Uh, with JavaScript, develop developers can access and manipulate the content and structure of DOM to create dynamic user interfaces, handle events, and perform various other uh, tasks. In this workshop, uh, we will cover the fundamentals of JavaScript DOM scripting, including how to access, manipulate, and traverse the DOM uh, using JavaScript. So um, just a couple takeaways here. It's, it, when, when I say tree-like structure, it's very similar to um, I guess trees in data structures if you guys learned um, like you know that in other classes uh, this is just one use of it and we'll go through and how like we'll, we'll visualize that as well once we go into that so what exactly is a DOM tree and also before I continue forward this repo um, this is uh, all the code that we're gonna write today is already pre-written on this repo I'll send it in chat um, in case you guys want to follow along through there or get behind um, yeah, that'll direct you to this. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, um, what is the DOM tree? So the DOM tree is made up of nodes, which are elements, um, which are the elements, attributes, and text content that make up the document. The root node of a tree, uh, is the document object, which represents the entire web page. And we're actually going to be manipulating the document, uh, body object, um, to do a lot of, uh, styling. Uh, if you're familiar with HTML styling, uh, you're you're used to creating like a style tag and then putting your styles directly in there or in a CSS file. Um, but here you can actually do your styling in JavaScript, kind of, and we're gonna uh, go into that as well. So um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll put this over here. I guess I can't do that. And I'm just gonna open up a Chrome tab, and let's go just let's just go to Google.com here and we can start messing with kind of the DOM. Uh, so if you go to your uh, inspect element, uh, for those who don't know how to go into the, uh, you right click on whatever web page you're on, go to inspect, this is your uh, kind of your development environment for designing a web page. Maybe some of you have seen this before, but um, pretty much this kind of shows you your HTML, the HTML that the server renders for you and that you as a client get to see. So you can see as I hover over some of these uh, divs, uh, some, some elements of this HTML, it'll highlight meaning where that is. So if I wanted to go to the search bar, I'd probably go here and then um, go to this form and then that's, you know, that's that search right there. Um, so that's kind of how the, you, you see that every element is a child or every element, like let's say if we want to navigate to this, um, this, this, uh, like the search bar, right? You have to first navigate, you have to first find like what you're trying to look for. So like if I want to find this, so I have to open this, right? Because it, this div right here, I have to open it. That means it's a child or is a parent of all these other elements. You can see it's like kind of indented. That's just kind of basic HTML. And uh, you'll see how that's represented in JavaScript. Um, what's up, uh, audio issues? You gotta turn me up here. I'll talk like a little louder. I don't want to be too obnoxious. Uh, so let's get into some of the coding. Um, I just wanted to show that. So I guess we can just, I'm, I'm going to create a file here, or I'll create a folder just called, um, let's call this just pages. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. Just I'm just being, I'm just organizing. Uh, and then in here, I'm going to open up uh, VS Code. Um, if you don't know how to do that, uh, please install VS Code. Uh, I'll do that right now. I'll show you how to do a VS Code. Uh, this website right here, download it. I would recommend it. It's my favorite code editing editor. Did I type that in wrong? No, I'm good. Um, you're probably going to want this if you have no coding editor already. Uh, but 
I'm only telling you to do this because we need to create a couple of files here. Like we're just going to create the HTML files. So first one we're going to do is uh, we're just going to do like we're just going to go through some of the concepts of DOM scripting and then we'll get into it. So I'm going to create let me make this bigger. Uh, that's too big. I'm going to create a test.html. Um, and again, if you don't know how to do it, if your coding editor doesn't let you create files like that, you can just right click do new. Uh, I just do like text document uh, and then do like my or just h or my page and then instead of dot txt do dot html that's just one way of uh, you know, doing that or creating a file uh, in case you're not familiar with that so um how, how do we structure html uh if you do uh, i thought there was like a little thing here okay but we can just do it manually so to kind of structure this is just kind of boilerplate code that I'm going to go through. I'm not going to explain too much of it. Uh, you have an exclamation point doc type HTML. Uh, then you have your HTML uh, tags. Uh, and everything inside of this HTML is the code that will be rendered uh, to you. So in each HTML code, you want to have a head. In the head, you can have a title. Um, I'm just kind of going through this quickly because this is usually boilerplate. This is usually given to you. You, you don't never have to really make this. Uh, and then also after your head, you usually have a body, and that's actually what gets that's what the user sees. Um, so if I were to let's, um, how am I gonna do this? Okay, I guess I can just open this. Or let's see, let's see if I can do this. Okay, I think that works. You don't have to. So to actually see your file, by the way, I probably should have said this. Right click your, your uh, HTML file and do open with and whatever browser you want. So if I do Chrome, it's gonna open up in Chrome over here. Um, but for the sake of this, and so you guys can see what I'm seeing, I'm just gonna put it in the same, uh, I guess, same window as me. So uh, in the title, I'm just gonna put testing and that'll be the title of this page. Um, and then in my body tag, I can start typing in stuff here. And if I refresh, um, oh, dang it, it doesn't show up. Okay, I'll just do this here. Yeah, you can see that my content shows up. Let me find a better way to do this. Uh, make this smaller. Okay, I guess that, that works. Um, and so this is like the content. So to actually access a lot of your, like, let's say we want to, let's say we have a P tag, right? So a P is just a paragraph tag in here. You could have whatever you want, a paragraph, whatever. Uh, let's say we want to access the content within here. So let's say I have, let's just have like something in here called content, uh, and then well, we're gonna have a uh, a script tag after the body tag. Doesn't really matter where. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna how do we access this element here in DOM? We just put an ID there, and let's create let's give it a unique ID. We'll just call this uh, my P. No, that's not good. Uh, my paragraph, that's a lot more specific. Okay, and then document. So how, like I said, uh, in, in the readme file right in here, we access everything through the document object. Or the document object here, I can kind of show you. Um, I can't detach this, but if I were just, if I were to just print out document in my console, it's, it's an object. It's, it has all, well, it's not an object, but it is, a DOM object that you can access the entire document in. You can see literally my entire code here represented within this variable. So I'm going to do document dot get element by ID, uh, and then in there I can put in my unique ID, just like that. And um, how do we access the value in there, or I guess the the, the the inner they call this the text content or the inner HTML? Uh, I can do this right here. Um, I can just console.log it, uh, and then if I were to console log this entire thing, you're going to see that um, I'll, I'll return out the actual object, like the actual HTML, but that's not useful for us. So to get the actual content in there, you do inner.h or inner HTML, and that gives you content in a string, or you could also do text content. I think that works. Yeah, that works as well. Um, so. There's a lot of ways of doing this, and I'll show you the list. So to access anything in here, we're gonna do, you can use any of these methods. My personal favorite is query selector. 
Uh, this allows you to do like query any element using uh, different directives, like using the class, using the uh, hash, which is for IDs. Using like you can use you can pretty much query it really nicely, um, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's get started with a quick example here. So I'm gonna set up. Uh, we'll call this test, and then I can leave that content. And also, if you guys have any questions, please interrupt me. Um, sometimes I do go ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going to create an image here and also have an ID called image. And we'll set the content of this image later or the source of it. And we'll also have an unordered or an ordered list here. Um, and that'll be of ID. Um, we'll call this groceries because we're going to make like a grocery basket. Uh, groceries. Groceries. I hope I know how to spell. Okay. So for now, we're gonna mess with this p tag right here. We're gonna do some, well, I guess before that, um, I said we were gonna, we, we can change the body's styling. So what I mean by that is you can change the styling of this tag right here, as, which applies to everything in here. So if I were to do document dot uh, body dot style uh, dot, yeah, you can see if I were to do everything within style, you'll see that this is very familiar with React if you've used React. Um, this is kind of a lot a, a lot of where those functions come from it comes directly from here uh, you'll see all of these uh, attributes that you can assign to you can also do set the style to a string and then in this string this is your raw css so i can do like background um and, and i'll set the background to like black and and with a semicolon you'll see that it'll render it out just like uh you, if you have like a normal css file but let's say we don't want to do this. This is not a good practice. We'll do uh, document.style.background color, and that'll be equal to let's make it gray. Uh, and boom, you see that it's you know it's gray. So let's get access to this element. We just did that. So I'm gonna do document dot uh, get um, element by ID, and uh, that'll be of test because we're getting this one right here, and uh, we're gonna assign this to a variable because we're gonna do some stuff. We're gonna do some stuff to it. So I'm gonna call this const element is equal to document get element by id. So we're getting this and assigning it to this variable here. And so let's say we want to change the uh, let's say we want to change the the color of this to white, like the font color. So to do that, remember we just learned how to do it with the um, with, with with right here. We can do element dot uh, um, what's it called element dot style dot color that's how you do it with text um, and that would be white like I said and that'll change it to white um, you can also change the content in here uh, so that'll be text content is equal to uh, my new content and you'll see by default it'll change it because it's running this script instantaneously or it'll run it as soon as you're uh, What's it called? As soon as your uh, your uh, like your page loads, and this is very similar to like uh, in React, like use effect when you when your component is mounted, it's pretty much like this script will automatically run. And we're gonna do some event stuff later. So uh, if you have experience with React, this should be uh, you, you should see a lot of uh, parallels. Um, let's set uh, let's set the image here. Let's set let's give this image right there's no image here but let's give this image a URL to use so I'm gonna do um, const image is equal to document uh, document dot get element by ID and so our ID for this image here is image so uh, now this image variable right is is you can see it's of type HTML element so now we can mess with a lot of its properties. So one of the properties for giving HTML or giving an image uh, its source is uh, it's well it, it's called SRC. So like if you were to give your image like a let's say a um, an image or like like an image URL to load from and you type in your uh, your website here or whatever your image is hosted at you would put your source there. But let's say we want to do that to do DOM. So to do that, we do image dot set attribute, and or src is the attribute, and then you put your file here. So I have a file here from Unsplash that I have pre-written. I'm just gonna throw that in there, uh, and you'll see that 
uh, it'll render out this image just like that. Um, that's kind of annoying. That makes my screen really large. So I'm going to comment that out uh, just like that, and it'll go away. Uh, let's let's go on with rendering uh, content, I guess dynamic content, and also creating elements in DOM. So we, let's say we want to fill this ordered list with list items that are from a grocery list. Uh, I said list like a lot of times, but let's let's say we have an array here called const groceries, and that'll be equal to an array of let's say oranges, apples, and uh, what else? What else do I have here? Grapes, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, what you can do now is you can, well before I do that, let's actually get access to this element, right? Um, one second, I was just checking, okay. Uh, we we want to get access to this element right here, so we're gonna do const uh, groceries groceries list element, and that'll be equal to document dot get element by ID, and that'll be of groceries. We have it defined right there, and so now we have access to that right to this variable, and so let's iterate through this array here. So I'm gonna do for uh, let item of groceries and what we can do here is let's create a list item uh, what is const used for uh, it's just a constant like not mutable that's pretty much uh, you can also use let for all of these um, you, this this would also work uh, let it just makes it work within this scope uh, it does not really matter uh, just don't use var uh, there's a lot of controversy around using var. Uh, it's not very good uh, in JavaScript. Uh, letter const works too, but const makes the stuff immutable. Um, let does the same exact thing. Doesn't well, not does not do the exact same thing. It, it makes it mutable, but it works within this scope right here. And so I, since everything's in the same scope, I can do let. Uh, that's fine too. Um, just don't use var. Um, so I'm gonna create a uh, let's do let list item is equal to document let's create uh, so to create a, a element in Dom you have to do create element you would have wondered and then you have you're given all these elements that you can use we, we want an li remember a list item is pretty much uh, what you put in an ordered list or whatever like the parent of a list so we're gonna create so for each iteration we're gonna create a list item now let's give that list item some some uh, uh, some content so that it can actually display because right now if I were to refresh it, it's not gonna do anything we have to actually append it to uh, this right here append it to the children of this um, and we haven't done that yet so let's first give our list item the kind of uh, values that we need it for so to do that we're gonna do list item dot uh, text content is equal to item because we're getting that from each iteration in the array. Hey, Zavar. Um, yeah, so in up? the chat, someone asked, what is const used for? Uh, I, I, I answered that. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're Just good. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're wondering, const is uh, immutable. So like, uh, just like in any other language, kind of. I don't know how I missed that. I'm sorry. You're good, you're good. <laughs> um, yeah, so we can give our list item the text content of our item. That's what we're getting from the array. Um, and pretty much what that renders out to, let's pretend like we were to console log this value each iteration. You'll get something like uh, an li here. Um, and that'll be like the item. So like, let's say this is the first iteration. This is what, like this is this, if you were to console log list item, that is what it would output to be. That is really terrible notation, but you get what I mean. So that's what it would uh, kind of uh, kind of create. Uh, now we have to let's let's give it actually another style. Uh, let's get give it some styling here. So list item dot style dot font size. Let's make this font size larger because we can do that. And again, this is uh, pretty much used for. This is pretty much the same as like doing it in CSS except you have these different directives to use. Uh, what are these? CSS declaration, uh, whatever that type is. Um, and then what we can do is we can take this and append 
um, we can do append child. And so what that means is we can take a node here, right? And append it to this grocery list element, which is right here, if that makes sense. So what we do is we append the list item, the thing that we just created, we this thing right here. Um, I think now if, if we were to run it, it'd be like style equals, um, what is it, like font size larger. That's what this would render out to be. Um, I'm just guessing uh, it would render out to this and then now we're going to append it to this parent as a child. And so now what you'll get is you'll get your oranges, apples and grapes uh, kind of just like that. So um, that's pretty much dynamic. Uh, what is this? This is just manipulating the DOM. Um, the basics of manipulating the DOM, we'll get more into it. Uh, any questions, comments? Okay, uh, we're gonna move forward. Again, if you have any questions, anything, maybe I'm going too fast, maybe I'm going too slow, just uh, please to let me know. Um, I'm gonna rename this to be, what did I call it? I called it, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna create a new te uh, HTML file here, and uh, we're gonna do some form validation. So, I guess what we can do is, actually before I do that, I wanna, let's, since I have some time here, I can explain what exactly what exactly happened um, let me make this bigger so you could see that yeah it was literally I had it right so every time what we're doing is this is the the child um, a little late is this react this is not react this is uh, traditional uh, what's it called traditional JavaScript vanilla JavaScript uh, Dom scripting so this is like what react is built upon well, this is what like every popular frame web framework is built upon. It's usually built upon some sort of DOM. Uh, it's it's not embarrassing. It is, no one knows this. This stuff is like no, like obsolete now. Uh, everyone uses like React or uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, it, this is good to know because then you get a better understanding of how some of those frameworks are built, how maybe React is built, how maybe um, you know a lot of those you know different frameworks are conceived I guess but you can see in here our, our OL our ordered list here uh, in in the the children of the ordered list you see each everything has like what we kind of had it to be like what we rendered it out to be um, and in the, you can see that our scripting is here as well um, I can also do some console logs so I can console log um, element no I'm going to console log grocery lists and I'm going to console log what else can I console log I guess I could console log no I don't need to do that I'll just, I'll just console log this so if we were to console log or grocery list you see that it's the actual XML or the HTML and in there is our children uh, that's exactly what we console log and you can see it highlights it because it's talking about the same thing it's, it's referenced in the same uh, like this grocery list was referencing that same part of the file so it's not going to make like a duplicate of it it's referencing it so um, that's kind of how that works um, I don't know how much more I can explain of that but I hope you understand it uh, let's create a next another file we're gonna do form validation so in here I'm gonna call this forms.html and uh, here we're gonna start off with some of the boilerplate again so the doc type HTML, HTML, everything in there. Uh, head, in the head we have our title. I'm sorry, I'm just doing this really fast. Forms, form validation. Um, in here we have our body, and then we have our script. Um, and this is just boilerplate. You usually, if you go to like, let me find it. I think it's like HTML shell yeah yeah like this this stuff is like you usually get them from the internet you usually don't have to make them by yourself so if that's scaring you don't be scared just copy this and you'll be fine um what's it called so let's get started with cr doing some form validation stuff so what exactly is form validation um well you're validating input in inputs that the user gives so let's say we have a set of inputs um so first Let's have an input here, and I'll have a placeholder. Let's say we want to make let's say we want to make like a registration form 
for someone on a website. Uh, so we'll have a placeholder here for an input and that'll be like first name. Um, and then we also want to give it a name and I'll tell you why instead of using like ID we can use name but for now I'll just do call this F name I'm gonna copy this through four times and get rid of the last one I'll tell you why um, uh, and this will be the last input is gonna be a button that'll actually submit it and then the value of that button will be like go and then our next input is gonna be a last name L name just for sh uh, keeping it concise and then we'll have another one for age so we'll have some validation like if you're not old enough you can't you know continue forward that'll be age of type uh, number because uh, you can't have an age with uh, alphabet you can't do that only numbers sorry and then on top of that we're gonna put this all in a form all in a massive form here so all the inputs are going to be, what's it called, inside of here. Uh, it'll be inside of this form. And I'll show you why the form's important. Because you can't, you can, you don't have to use a form. You can make these all IDs and parse them individually, but that gets tedious. So doing this in a form is probably your best bet. And I'm going to give this form a name. And we'll call this uh, registration. Registration, I spelled that right. Good. Um, okay and what we're going to want to do in here is let's let let's look at the output of this so forms i'm going to open this up in chrome you can see that it looks just like this um let's give it let's make it look a little nicer uh we'll give it like a an h1 tag and it'll be like form or like enter your info uh something like that and so what we can you can see is like uh you know i can type in something here I can type something here. I can't type any, you know, anything in here with my normal keyboard. I can only put numbers in here because this is an input number uh, that's right here, of type number, um, and then the go that'll submit our form. Uh, so let's get started with the scripting. Let's let's find a way to take the values from these inputs and kind of uh, do our validation through there. So let's get access to my to the form. So const let's call this my form. Is equal to document dot forms uh, dot so it'll it's like document and then this is like all the forms in the document and then of your name so document uh, dot forms dot registration so that'll refer to this form right here because we have it of type or of name registration so that'll refer to that so every time we want to refer to this entire form we can use this my form variable and let's create a function here called uh, what's it called the validate form and let's give it let's give it a parameter of e I'll show you what that means later that's just an event uh, that's to prevent default behavior um, and uh, we're also gonna make it listen for when we press this button so to, to uh, make things listen uh, we use add event listeners you could also use like on click and throw this validate here too. validate form that's one way of doing it if you played with react that's probably one of the most popular ways of doing it but if we're doing like normal dom uh, this is the kind of this is what I see a lot of people do with dom so you do my form dot add event listener and then we want to listen for when it's submitted so when that's either the enter button or the press go button because this is a uh, oh shoot wait this is not supposed to be a type button this is supposed to be a type submit sorry about that um, so it'll listen for submitting this form so there's two ways of submitting right you could press enter and you could also press the submit button uh, that's so anytime though that event is triggered we're gonna run a function called validate form and that is what this function is so in case you're a little confused on the syntax here we have this E here uh, pretty much what this syntax means is it's gonna do like it's gonna run a callback function here um, with e and e will be available like in here so it would be the same as like doing validate form of e like that is what this does right here uh, that's might be a little confusing um, but 
to make it cleaner we just throw it in and it'll assume that parameter it'll like bind it um, and so the anytime like our form will be submitted uh, it'll run this function with the event available to us because that event the event listener will pass the event through it and I'll show you what the event means um, uh, and we, we literally only deal with it once we just do e dot prevent uh, default uh, in react you might have seen this to kind of uh, what it does is it cancels the submit event um, what that does uh, like it pretty much what that means is that it doesn't refresh the page on submission so it'll keep all your values persistent we just do that as a convention so our data doesn't get lost so to actually get the values from here uh, what we can do is we could have we can do a bunch of variables so we can have const l name so that'll be our let's do let's do this in order so if const f name so that's our first name is equal to my form right so that's this uh, variable right here so my form dot um, what's it called dot you use the name in here so dot uh, f name dot value so that's how we get the value um, if you were to just do this like if I were to console like this expression right here it would uh, print out uh, what's it called? It'll print out this entire XML or this little object right here, uh, document object. Uh, but we don't want to do that. We just want the value inside of this. So that'll be just like that. And then we can copy and paste this uh, three times. And then this will be L name. This will be L name. And then we have one more here. Uh, it'll be age. So age and age, and I'm just calling, the, you, you don't have to make this the same as like this middle one. I'm just doing it to make it as clear as possible. You can call this first name. You can call this last name, does not matter. Uh, just remember what you call it. Um, so uh, let's see here. So let's actually do our validation logic. So I'm gonna do everything in a try catch. Um, and so we'll have our E here and this will be, and now nah, I don't wanna call it E cause then it'll screw with that so I'll just call it error ERR and so any errors we'll get we're just gonna alert the user with them um, and in case you guys don't know what alert does I can just do it real quick alert um, test it just opens up this little dialogue you've seen it on really annoying websites before where they spam you with it um, so that'll be that and so how do we get like how do we do the validation we can have our logic so Let's say we want to make uh, the first name field and the last name field and also the age a requirement to fill out. Like, let's say we don't want them to actually en like enter something without actually typing it in. Uh, what you can do is you can do if no first name, um, then you could throw, uh, please enter a first or enter your first name. And then I can do this for the other ones. So we can change this to last name, and then this one to last name, and then age, and then please enter your age, uh, just like that. Um, and so I, I think you, this isn't actually necessary now that I'm thinking about it. I think they added this thing, yeah, where, they, where it's like required. So if you don't actually have anything in here, I'm not sure but you can also use this and it has it's it has like a little thing to use but let's just pretend like we're not doing that we're just uh, practicing with JavaScript here um, so we have our validation so anytime we throw something it'll throw this string and then our catch it'll catch that exception and it'll print it out uh, or not print it out it'll uh, alert everyone in there so um, we can do that right and we can also add some more handling to it like let's say a user like if the age of a user is less than 18 uh, they can't access our website so you are you are not old enough um yeah so if if their age is less than 18 then it'll tell them you're not old enough so let's try this out um i think that's it I, let me let me try this out here all right oh yeah no actually I gotta add one more thing to to show that it actually worked so if it if everything worked we're gonna say like alert uh, welcome to the site and why this works is because once you throw something like once the first exception is thrown our try like our try uh,
catch or it'll catch whatever we just tried uh, what this does is it catches an exception so it'll catch this and then any exception you have will be like this error here because this is technically an error it'll print or it'll alert the error and then stop any other code from executing so let's say we have like our first name filled out uh, the expected behavior would be it'll this exception would not be thrown because the condition is met this exception will be thrown because um, what's it called we don't have a last name submitted and so it'll just tell us it's kind of sequentially so if I were to do that it'll be like you need to enter your last name and it'll stop that code at that exact moment it's kind of like return statements um, but this is a better way of doing it um, and so let's actually like use this website correctly so let me put in my name here uh, so let's say let's pretend like I'm 12 um, oh that's not right uh, let's see here let's check out the what's it called let's check out the the console here let's see why that was being weird Okay, this is being weird. I'm gonna do. Oh, okay. That is really weird. Let me try like my actual age here. Okay, I think it was just being weird because I was small window maybe. I don't know. But yeah, you can see that if I was 12, it'll say that I'm not old enough. If I'm 18, uh, I am, and it'll be well. It'll wel welcome me to the site. And so that's basic form validation. You can add more input fields. So the more you add, like let's say I want another field for like my height. Uh, and then this will be of height, like of name height. Make sure you remember this. And uh, we'll make this like height in inches because this is like one input field. Um, it'll show that up. But you have no, that's not required, right? Because we didn't make a, a like a, exception for it or we, we we didn't make like a thing to like validate it so technically if you were to type everything in um it'll welcome me because this isn't required but what you can do is you can do like if no um was it my form dot what do we call it we called it height dot value then we throw uh please enter your height and refresh it it'll be like please enter your height let's say I actually enter my height it'll work um, and then obviously you can refactor this put a variable here to make it more concise so I'll call this my height and just like that or let's say like you have to be uh, tall enough you're not tall enough to be in this website um, oh, why the exclamation mark so what this is this is like a negator like uh, Pretty much when I say like, like, let's say they do provide a first name, that's pretty much what this means. But if they do not provide a first name, you put that exclamation point, it'll negate it. So like, um, I could show you real quick here. Um, this is just a JavaScript thing. So in JavaScript, if you have like, um, like true here, like true or true, that'll print out true. Like that's just a true condition. Like five is greater than two, that's a true condition. Uh, five is not greater than two that is a or five is less than two that is a false condition or that is a false uh, thing here but if we were to do like not five is less than two that'll be true it'll just negate it it's a not operator in Python I think uh, well, my headphones just turned off but in Python it's like not and then your condition um, hope that answers your question uh, but this is pretty much like just checking if uh, what I actually forgot to do it uh, if like by default let's say you don't provide your like your form value it'll be null so this value it would be like null right null is just null but not null is true because null is technically false it's kind of weird it's just a JavaScript nuance just I it's it's dumb but that's just how we do it um, I know the the people who are familiar with uh, uh, what's it called the explicit languages or explicitly typed languages are freaking out right now but this is just uh, one of the sh shortcuts of kind of using a scripting language so pretty much what this means again I'll summarize it if not last name uh, because this if it, let's say last name let's pretend last name's value is null like let's say that's its value this exception will always be thrown because this not null is true and so if it is true it'll throw that exception right so if no last name 
they did not d decide to give a last name, then it'll throw that. I hope that makes sense. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to say, like, if your height is uh, less than, like, 15 inches, you can say you're too short. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that'll work just like that. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much form validation. Um, any questions? I can. I. I, mean, I might be going too fast. I'm sorry, but please. Any. Any questions? It doesn't matter. I, I. I have. We have a lot of time. I have literally one more thing. It's the to do app, and I don't think that'll take. A whole hour. I think that'll take like maybe thirty minutes. But it's pretty much like. Uh, we're gonna build a to do app, and that'll be creating, removing, um, I got and updating the DOM. Uh, and that that that's it. That'll be using events. We'll be using lifecycle events, which are used in React and other very popular frameworks. So, I guess if we don't have any questions, I guess I can move on. Um, but please, if you do, like interrupt. Any general questions too? Like I I don't care. Um, we're ahead of schedule, so that's always good. Um, I'll I'll if you do, just please let me know. I'll start this other one. So. Our last thing here is called to dos.html. So what a to do is is something you got to do. So we're going to have a kind of application that'll manage how to like like stuff you have to do, kind of like a reminders thing. Uh, and, but it won't actually remind you, it'll just be there. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll just be like, you, you'll see what I mean. Um, so first I'm going to start off with the, I'm just going to copy this and get rid of all of that stuff and all of this stuff and we'll call this um, uh, to do to do app and what else are we gonna do we can have change this heading here to do we can say like manage your uh, manager to do's I guess um, so I guess how we can start this off, we can make it a lot, oh, hold on. Let me make this to do's, okay. So, what was I gonna do? Um, yeah, so let's make this look a little nicer. We can give it a black background and white text so we can you know manage that contrast. So to do that, we, can, we know how to do that globally, or I guess, through the body, so you do document dot body dot style dot background color, um, and that'll be equal to black document. And I'm also gonna change. So like, let's say we do that, our text disappears. So let's make our text white. So I'm gonna do document dot body dot style dot color is equal to white so color just refers to like text color it's weird that's just how it works um just like that and so now we kind of have our contrast and globally like anything like if i had a p tag here uh like hi it'll be white as well because everything by default is black like the text color is so now we have changed that through this uh, kind of script and uh, i mean like you could also you know you could you could do a um what else uh, a style tag here and that's just CSS in here. And you could do like body and have a background color of black and have a like the, the normal color of white. This right here, this does the exact same as this. I'll comment it out just to prove it to you. Oops. You'll see that it makes literally no difference. I'm refreshing it and I can make this white or I can make this like gray and like it does that exact same thing um, and so that's how you do styling in here but I'll leave this for now um, let's create our to-do list so I'm gonna create a in in my body I'm gonna have a um, an on or, or what is it called what's a U, UL what is UL uh, unordered list right yeah unordered list sorry I literally just forgot for a second so I'm gonna create a UL here which is an unordered list it says where the order is not important yet so it's an unordered list here 
Uh, and that this will house all my things that I want to do. So it'll be like a list of things that I need to get done. So I'm going to have, I'm going to give this an ID of uh, to do's. I know I'm saying, I know there's a lot of to do's here. Don't get confused. Um, and I also want to have, um, I guess we can first get to do's. We can get access to this ordered list. I'm going to have const, um, let's call this to do's list because this is an or unordered list. So we'll just call it to do's list. And this will be equal to document dot query selector. And I, I haven't talked about query selector, but you could do get element by ID and do to do's. Um, you could also use query selector. And so what that does is you do like hash for uh, classes. Um, and that's how you access like a class name of to do's. If we call this, or sorry, I, I said class, I mean ID. But if you want to do a class, and that's more conventional for like styling frameworks, um, you could have, you do, instead of hash, you do dot, <coughs> excuse me, and that'll do the exact same thing. Uh, and I haven't talked about class, but if you've worked with uh, styling frameworks like Tailwind or uh, what else, like Bootstrap, they use classes for a lot of their um, like styling attributes or to like kind of give it attributes. Um, you don't need to do that here. The convention is usually ID, uh, so I'll keep it at that. And so again, if we were to console lock to do's list, it'll print out the reference to this unordered list right there. So let's pretty much uh, let's first make a way for us to create to do's. So to do that, we need an input, and we also need a button so that once they have inputted whatever they want, they can press the button and it'll create the to do. So to do that, I'm gonna do that. Oh, you see what I did there? To do that. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna do input type text uh, and then so text is usually you know this is kind of redundant you don't need this but by default it's text like every every input is a text uh, and then ID is equal to um, we'll call this to do input uh, and we'll refer to that later and then I'm also gonna do button uh, and this will be like create so that'll look something like that um, and then if we want to make it look even nicer, we can add a uh, we can add a HR here, which just makes like a little border, uh, just like that. Actually, that kind of looks ugly. I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, and so right now it does nothing. Obviously, we have to give it some functionality. So let's make it so that let's create a function that once that like once this button is clicked, it'll create uh, oops, it'll create. A to do based on whatever's in this input box. So to do that, we're going to create a function const uh, create to do, and this is just another way of writing a function. This is called an anonymous arrow function. Uh, it's pretty much like the same thing as doing like create to do. And so to not confuse you, I'll just use the same convention. I'll do uh, just like that. That's just a, this is just like a global function. Um, and not really recommended when you're actually making or writing code uh, just because you know this is global but we're gonna have a function called create to do and then every time this button is clicked uh, we're gonna do like on click here we'll do create to do and so anything inside an on click by the way is like uh, evaluated code so this is just like something that will run in here uh, you, you could like run any sort of JavaScript expression inside of here uh, and again you could also do like the add event listener um, but I'm gonna just do on click here because I don't want to write that out and so in here let's let's first get the value of this input so to do that I'm gonna do const input value is equal to I want to get this input value right here so I'm gonna do uh, document dot query selector and again you could use um, the other one, the document get element by ID. Um, uh, we're gonna do hash to refer to it ID, uh, and then to do input. That's the ID of this, and now we can uh, get its value. So to get like I, we we already went through that. Uh, you know how to get values. It's just the the input dot value. Here we have our input, and then the value inside of that input. 
and we're gonna do some conditional here to check if they actually type something in we don't want them to create a blank um, to do so we're gonna do if there is no input value which is what that means if there's no input value we're just gonna return alert um, please enter enter something to do um, and again I'm not using the try catch logic that we did over here I only use this because it simplified the syntax of like throwing errors um, since we only have one conditional to check I'm just gonna make it return uh, alert and that'll make the code under here the code that we type later not run if that condition is met that's what that return does so um, I'm not using the try catch so let's do uh, let's create a to do element so remember we, we, we know how to create elements we did that right here so we can do const um, to do item and that'll be a list item uh, that's equal to document dot create element I should probably full screen this oh no not what I should uh, and then create element and we're gonna give create a li here which is a list item um, and then what we're gonna want to do is we want to set give this like content like the inner content of it we want to do to to do item dot content or no no text content that's equal to this value that we got from this input here so to do that we just we just put we just assign that just like that so its value will be mirrored to the same value of our input uh, at that specific moment and let's give it some other styling attributes uh, to make this easier um, actually we can skip that for now I'll show you what I mean later but let's so this is pretty much how we create it let's let's do the final thing to do uh, to do's list so that's up here that's this parent that's this right here the unordered list uh, let's do append child because we want to append that to that list and let's append the to do item so right here you can see that if I were to do like test you see that it's appended test 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 just like that it works now how do we delete them um, it's pretty simple actually we can just listen for when uh, one of these is clicked or when any of these list items are clicked it'll just delete itself so to do that we can do um, say to do item dot add event listener uh, for we'll, we'll listen for the click event so that's when it's clicked on and uh, when that's clicked we can do uh, we can run a function here and in that function we do to do item dot remove um, let me make this syntax okay so this is just pretty much like an anonymous function it's, it's similar to uh, what we just did um, I think to do dot item dot remove will also work yeah that works okay I don't know why I wrote it really weird but this works as well because what we're doing is to do item dot remove is a function so by itself it does nothing but if you were to call it it'll run but you know because this is a callback uh, I'll just make it what I had it I think that makes more sense so this is a function so once that to do item is clicked we run a function that will do uh, to do item dot remove and that does the exact same thing I'm just trying to make it more clear so if I were to click on any of these it'll click that first one so let me like actually make it like I don't know why I just made more uh, let's say like I can make this bigger too so let's say like uh, take out the trash uh, do homework so these are things I have to do and uh, let's say I finish taking out the trash I click it it goes away just like that but like it kind of doesn't make sense uh, like that's kind of a thing like you know you don't even know if it's clickable it doesn't even feel clickable it just feels like text so to make this a little more user-friendly um, what we can do is uh, we can add some styling to it so first uh, when we do something you'll notice that it kind of turns into like highlighting like similar to over here uh, we're highlighting text we can do to do item dot style dot cursor and make this the cursor a pointer and so what that does is when we create it uh, like instead of like highlighting it'll be like an actual it looks clickable like my cursor right here you, if you can see my cursor it looks clickable so 
that's one way of looking at it or one way of making it a little more user friendly uh, we can also make it when it's hovered on uh, it'll have like a line through it to make to like indicate that it'll be like uh, that to make it look like that it's like it can be deleted so to do that we can do uh, to do item dot on mouse over and this is an actual event on mouse where is it I can just type it out on mouse over so when it's um, so if you did to why is that different from uh, so this is like yeah so I was just playing around with the syntax I didn't know you could do that before I didn't know you could do to do item I mean, I'm just answering your question uh, this is pretty much the same as this like technically speaking there is an event in here and um, what uh, let me let me make this a little more let me like explain this a little better so this technically speaking is like I just did it again. Okay, so let me go back. And I'll make this to do item. To do item dot remove. Okay, so let's have this over here, and I'll just comment this out for now. So this here is the exact same as what this turns out to be. So function e. So that's like this right here evaluates to this right here. It's the same as this. Um, but we don't really need, you can see in remove, like this function here doesn't, like this is a like a, just a normal function here that's part of DOM. It doesn't require any parameters, so it's just gonna automatically ignore it. So this is fine, like this works, but um, what we're doing is we're passing unnecessary data and sometimes that data can also break some of your functions. So uh, we can just take the, we can ignore it altogether by just getting rid of the E parameter, the event parameter, and just pass it in to as it was, if that makes sense. Hope I answered your question. Um, yeah, no problem. And again, we're, we're like way ahead of schedule. I did not think I was gonna fly through this. Um, maybe I shouldn't have flown through it. <laughs> but, um, so yeah so when so what i was going what i was trying to do was or before um was when we hover over our like our list like this item right here this list item i want to make it like strike through i want it to make it look like uh i want to make it look like the text has been like crossed out so to do that i'm going to listen for when the mouse is hovering over our elements so that's what this is right here dot on mouse over and uh, if that's equal to the function or we'll set that equal to the function so if uh, like the mouse like if our mouse gets like hovers over it it'll run this function and this is an anonymous function uh, and it, in this function we can do this and so this refers to this um, to do item like this list element so this dot style dot text decoration if I spell that right decoration and that'll be equal to line through so let's create something here so by default it'll stay line through but you can see that it's line through um, and I realized that um, I didn't have to do it like this we could have followed the same syntax in fact uh, let me do that right now so I'm gonna do to do item so Let's do to do item to add event listener. We'll listen for the on mouse over event, and then we can run this function here. And instead of using this, in case that's complicated, we can just do to like just like we did for remove to do item dot style dot text decoration is equal to line through, um, just like that. See by default. Um, it's not gonna have the line through once we oh, maybe that's not how it works uh, Okay, I might have been wrong about this. I don't know what exactly the let's actually go with this real quick um, Mouse events add event listener 
listener Dom JS. Let's just could do a quick Google. Um, okay, so th they're called something. They're actually different. Uh, they're called something different. So, uh, it's mouse down and mouse up. Or is that for no? That's clicking it. Okay, no, no, no hold on. I'm wrong. Uh, that's if you move over. So mouse over. So it's not actually on mouse over. It's just mouse over. So let's see if that fixes it. Yeah, so my mouse was over it just for a second and now it'll stay crossed through, but I want it to be only when it's hovering. So to do that, um, to make it like do what I just said, we do mouse, what was it, uh, mouse. So what we did was it fires when the mouse cursor is outside the element. Okay, so that's if it's outside the element. Oh, and then you move it inside the element, okay. And then mouse out fires when the mouse cursor is over that specific element and then it moves to another element. So that can be moving out of the original element. And so we have, uh, what was that? Mouse out. So mouse out. So it, uh, if it's mouse out, then we'll give it no text decoration. And so what this does is, if I were to refresh it, let's do like homework. So you could see that for a second. Yeah, well, it works. So like if I were to hover over it on mouse over this list item, it'll put that it'll apply that style and then when I move out I'll move out of that uh, element it'll apply nothing so this gets fired I can actually make it look like if it just doesn't make sense we can do console log um, mouse is over our element and then I'll console log mouse is out of our element and so this will probably fire a lot more um, so let's let's try this out here. Open up my console here. I'm gonna. Well, this is very small. Let me just make it normal. Oh, I guess I can't. Is it really? I have to. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm gonna do like take out trash. So you can see. <coughs> excuse me. Um, mouse is out of our element. So let, let me let, let me bring my mouse over here. It'll run that function, mouse is over our element. Uh, and then once it's out, it'll run that function again. You can see that that's pretty much how that works. This function will fire every time this event is triggered, if that makes sense. That's kind of a thorough way of looking at it. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, but the way I was doing it before, or that I had it written down, was you can also do like, you can directly bind it to like on mouse over. Um, because what that does, technically speaking, if I were to inspect it, you see that, oh no, you don't actually get to see it. But if I were to have done it the other way, uh, like this way, um, and then I'll console, or I'll get rid of this, I cannot comment correctly. Okay, um, and then you'll see that Will you see? No, you won't see. Okay, so I thought, I thought, okay, let me, I'll just show you what I mean. Um, pretty much, let's say we have a to-do already in here. So let's say li, um, let's say like take out the trash. And pretty much what I was doing programmatically was this. I was gonna do on mouse down, and that's equal to a function. Let's say that's just our function that does God knows what. It doesn't matter, but that's pretty much what that does. What this does programmatically uh, that's what it would render out to be um, in HTML and then what we did here is we just added event listeners similar to what we did when we were listening for it to be clicked um, either of those work um, and yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it so I'm a little way past my schedule I did not think I was gonna get to finish all of this um, I guess I did. Any questions, any example, you, you want me to go through like another example and you want me to talk something, maybe talk about, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, you know, making this better, making this have more features, if something I didn't get to cover. Cause I pretty much got to cover uh, manipulating the DOM. So this is like adding stuff to it. This is like creating, where is it? Uh, creating list, el list items um, and then accessing the DOM that's query selector that's your get element by id um that's your 
yeah, get element by ID, that's your query selector. There's a lot of ways of doing that. Manipulating it, that's creating list, that's changing the aspect, the attributes directly uh, with the JS, um, and then listening for it. I should probably comment this out. Listening to it, and I'll get rid of this too to make this normal again. But uh, you can see that a lot of this stuff is uh, if, if you've worked with other frameworks, you'll see a lot of what we're writing here is very tedious. And there's a reason why there's so many JavaScript frameworks out there. Um, because no one wants to write this for every little thing that they do. Like, I'm sure this entire file could be written in, like, maybe 10, like, 20 lines. Like, half the amount of lines here if you did this in React. Uh, just because it's, it's, a, it's a lot more... Uh, I guess the developer experience for that kind of stuff is a lot better, but it's it's important to learn because you see a lot of a lot of uh, parallels between React, the, like this frame, or like using vanilla JavaScript, normal JavaScript, and and using React or Svelte or whatever. Um, yeah, I hope you can draw those contrasts. Um, that's about it. I could stay a little extra. Uh, I, I I have I I a lot of two hours. We've only have like 45 minutes left i could stay after that's pretty much all i have for you guys if you have any questions please stick around um thank you for showing up i appreciate it i hope you guys learned something and uh yeah thank you i'll, uh, I'll just mute here and sit in this call by myself but yeah you guys are you guys are good thank you